Pickaxe. Hello? God, you can, if only you could see my face right now. Hello? Oh, I'm thinking the words. I'm thinking hard. Mm. Thinking of something to say. Think of a... Mike, you think of a... Think of a, think of a really good cold open for us. Oh, yeah, go on. Fun of all the... Oh, the time you want. Oh, cold open. They're very good. Uh, uh, I like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, all right. We're, start, we're started on fire. I, I was thinking, what's your favourite jack of potato filling? Is that, is that a hard-hitting cold open for you? I mean, mm. I can be a. I can give you a controversial cold open in that I don't really like jacket potatoes very much. Jesus, I'm to agree, Peter. I think that I think it's on the, on the scale of good to bad potatoes, it's not the best. No, not the best, but it's also far from the worst. My God, I didn't know I was podcasting with a bunch of heathen all, heathens all these years. It's just fine. Not, it's just not, fine. Nothing like God, the jack of potato. It doesn't even need anything on it. Bit of salt. You scoop out all the mushy insides from the mashed potato. Eat it, eat it separately. And there's a lovely dessert for your main course. You have just potato skins. It's the full package. And dessert. You... Wow, well, <laughs> <nice laughs> lunatic. Potato skin dessert. See, yeah. I don't mind potato skins, but you, you lost me. Well, I was already lost. But the reason I was lost is because of that mushy, mashy interior. I don't really like mashed potato very much either. I just think it's like. Where's the what? What is this? Where's the rest of the potato? <laughs> it's um, joy, Peter. It's joy. Wow. I mean, I'll, I'll eat it. I'm not saying I I hate it, but you know, I just I wouldn't choose it. Oh God, no, that's like the best Sorry. bit. Whenever I do a roast of any kind, like mashed potato, load of butter, salt, pepper, a little bit of mustard in it. Oh, I'll go to town on that and bit of then, monkey's blood. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, now you're talking, monkey's blood. Oh, right. Well, not. Oh, I, was, well, I was hoping we'd have a discussion about this, but I guess it's just flat out no from you. If you had to, if you were force fed a jack potato, what would you rather was on top of it? Roast You'd, potatoes. Roast potatoes. Sorry, I'll get <laughs> my potatoes. Potato. <laughs> no, that's what I'd have on top of it. Yeah, just a big stack. <laughs> and just pick around the jack of potato for the good stuff. Okay, fair. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I'd probably, you like Mikey? you said, I'd have like maybe some salt and pepper, just sort of season it up, give it a bit of bit of crunch, bit of flavour, bit of interest. <laughs> yeah, what's yours though, Mikey? You're the expert. You're the connoisseur. Oh, beans, man. Just beans. beans. It's classic, beans. unsophisticated. Probably That's what said, a lot of pe people would say. Yeah. Would have said tuna in my early years, maybe. But actually, but tuna and jack potato always felt wrong. Like it tasted nice, but it felt wrong. So mm. those days are behind me now, at least. Now I'm on the, the God-righteous path of just salty potatoes. <laughs> We used to have beans and jacket potatoes quite a lot for tea when I was growing up. And that's maybe why I'm not a huge fan of yeah, that. Even maybe. that combination is just does nothing for me. Um, but I think cheese and tuna is a good is a good jacket potato combination. Yeah, you're right, actually. I would, yeah, cheese would really liven it up for me. I would, I would like that. Okay. Well, it feels like we've turned a, a slight corner from the previous... Total nose of jack potatoes into some interest, so we'll keep <laughs> working so on many it. Listeners, no. <laughs> it's a bit like uh, when I make an omelet. I um, I know it's meant to be like egg based, but my omelets are mostly cheese based. They happen to just have an egg in there as well. Like I will grate a <laughs> lot puck. of cheese into Whoa. my omelet pan, and it, it's mm. basically just a big cheese patty <laughs> with a slight egg flavour in there too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> slight egg flavour. Oh, I respect that. I respect that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah, your 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 go to cooking method is cheesing everything up until it's barely recognizable as its yeah. original form. Mm -hmm. Respect that. I respect yeah. that. Okay. Oh, and Kevin, should we ask Kevin what his favorite variety of jacketed potato is? Well, yeah. What's chance. your favorite, Kevin? Tune. Nah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official Vidiots podcast. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three us, where everybody brings a, a thing, thing a along, along to, to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I'm Michael. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. How, are you How doing? are you, Ben? Oh, oh, Ooh. I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, I thought I'd get in there before you asked this time. Feeling a... Uh, uh -huh. Feeling a bit fatigued, not oh, yeah. gonna lie. There's just, I mean, you're very much in the same boat, Peter. There's yes. just something on every single night 
yeah. this week and it's all content and I'm yeah. so tired. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God. I just want a free evening to sit down and do nothing, you know? Uh, uh-huh. you're, you're walking, talking content machines, you don't get That's a That's it. It never ends. The content never stops and I'm, I'm feeling a little tired and I, I walked in <laughs> after cycling home and uh, you know that time someone pissed my bed? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the hotel. Well, <laughs> yeah. someone someone pissed the rug in the middle of my kitchen. Oh. Was it your cat? It was not my cat. Oh. So I was looking at it and, well, I stepped on it first and it was soaking wet. Oh, oh no. I thought, how the fuck has this happened? And I couldn't <laughs> see any wet patches. There was no tributaries to the wet thing. Anything on the ceiling? There was ceiling? nothing coming out of any cupboards. Nothing in the ceiling. Nothing. I, I was at a total loss. I was like, how on earth is is just this wet? And I touched it and I had a sniff. It's water. It's mm-hmm. not tinkle. Okay. And I was like, how, how has it happened? And then I noticed we got a new dishwasher. Oh, and no. uh, Muggins over here plumbed it in uh, because he oh. thought that he could do it properly. And to be fair, he did do it properly, but he just didn't do it tight enough. And the reason I couldn't <laughs> see the source of the water was because it there was a very, very subtle trickle that was traveling between the grouting and the floor tiles. So it was, right. it was oh. sort of stealth wetting the rug <laughs> um so that explained that so I, I pulled it out from the unit you know the 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 kitchen counter unit mm-hmm. and turned off the valve and mopped it all up and then i i what did what happened what even happened next i can't remember i fed the cat it's and like I the, went to the story toilet. all over again <laughs> it won't stop i then got out the toilet and the cat had run around the house and then thrown up her tea all over the floor <laughs> oh my god like, god God, and now I've got to go and be funny as well? Yeah. When, when does it stop? When does it calm down? Fortunately, it comes naturally to you, so you won't struggle. But That's very true. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> so. Yeah, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit tired. Um, long week. It's only Wednesday. How about you? How are you doing, Peter Austin? Very well, thanks. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, also kind of not, not loving the fact that it's... Content tonight, content tomorrow, time of recording. We've got our, our late night stream. To be fair, I didn't have my evening stream uh, this week because I was I was off sick and had the plops. So, um, <laughs> you know, I've not had as much to do. But even even just two days back to back of like your evening being having a two hour block in the middle of it where you're like doing stuff is. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it gets in the way of your leisure time. That's that's all it is. I still enjoy happy, what we're doing. Happy to be here. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. What, what a blessing. What a, what a blessing. privilege. Yes. What a yeah. fun thing to do. It's just sure. it's a lot back to back, and I'm back to I'm back is what it is. Yeah. Sleepy. I want to sit down and play video games, but I've I don't got have my Star Wars to watch tonight. I'm, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm just watch. I'm just waiting till this podcast is over so I can watch it. But I'm gonna have fun <laughs> while I wait. That's yes, the you, important yes, thing. Yes, we all will. Yes. <laughs> I've had I've had three days off work, so I'm I'm feeling oh, pre- pretty chipper at the minute. I'm sorry, you guys are a bit so busy. If I could donate <laughs> some days off to you guys, I would, but I want them off myself, so I won't. Oh, it's understandable. Why have you had the days off? I just had days off to use before the end of the financial year, so they all oh, get. Oh, it's a financial clumped. year company, is it? We're a calendar year kind of <laughs> kind of organisation. La di da. I think I'm quite mm. happy with this because it means. If you ever need to bundle up some days off, you get to do it right now on the first day of spring. So it's been bloody mm. lovely. Yeah, I've been outside. Good. I ate cake, looked at birds. Just what oh. a day. What a day. Wow. That sounds <laughs> amazing. <laughs> All at the same time as well. Cake yeah. and birds. That's that's too much fun, really, if anything. Yeah, it I is. I did very nearly go into the Asda uh, Bedminster with the intention of seeing if there happened to be any birds in there. King of birds. <laughs> yeah, you can cake, cake and look at a bird. <laughs> All it's in a- your one-stop shop for cake <laughs> and bird needs. Yeah. It's truly a wonderland. I didn't make it in, but I am very keen to go back one day soon, or at least make it part of like a, a fortnightly routine to pop in. Mm. Any birds about? No? Okay, any try birds? again next time. In the Asda Birdminster store. <laughs> I can see the headlines now. Parrot boy caught in Bedminster Asda. <laughs> caught in Cannot bacon find row exit. on holiday. <laughs> He's hanging out in the rafters, just eating bacon. <laughs> bacon. Yeah, Doing it. poos on passers-by. The usual yeah. stuff. Oh, usual geez. bird things. Oh, classic Bedminster. Fantastic. Well... Speaking of donating, well, you were going to donate some holiday, but 
actually, I'd rather have money. Ooh. And if you'd like to donate some money, you can. You don't have to, but you can by going to podiots.com. Three pounds or more will get you a shout out at the beginning and the end of the next episode. You'll join Pod Squad for this uh, for this week. And we'll really, really appreciate it. It helps us out. Um, well done Mikey- to... Uh, well, I was going to say, well done to everyone who... who- got into this pod squad because we're only doing it a week after the previous yeah. one so very true extremely generous of you all um mikey do you want to kick us off i'd be delighted we begin with mr blobby experience glasgow <laughs> <laughs> donak 07 uh the generous tommy the wank engine and they say triggerly serite here i've slacked off donations for a while so please have some extra cheddar did y'all know some animals, uh, mammals, not humans, have a baculum, which is a penis bone? Oh. Woo. Oh. The baculum of the walrus is the biggest of them all, nearly a metre long. By word, Whoa. Billy. Jesus. Scandal. That is too long. <laughs> Thank you for the penis facts, Tommy. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity. Thanks, Tommy. Thank Cheers, you. Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. We continue with Freddy Webber, Bebber, Bebber, Bebber. Uh, somehow Jesus returned and Stephen Scordes. We've also got Alexa, do you work for the CIA? Alexa, you're lying to me. Sorry, everyone, for <laughs> doing that to you at home. <laughs> Lord Brotovich, Frog Lee, Caroline, DFS have a sale on. <laughs> <laughs> and Caroline, can we get a parrot? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the answer is yeah. yeah. And finally, we've got Mr. Macca. Well-known democratic judo, Caroline fucking did, <laughs> only on podiats. Can you say, show me your thing? That's true. Uh, that there is. we are. Show me that your is, baculum, whatever that it's is called. Your, your pod squad for this week. Three pounds or more if you go to podiats.com, get to your shout out at the beginning and the end of the next show. You support the things you enjoy and we'll really appreciate it. The cat has decided she's had enough of me. Go on. Yeah, bugger off. I don't want you either. Yeah. I'm um, sick somewhere. Go do it. No, please don't. Do you guys have a favourite out of those ones what we got? I always love a Caroline, but uh, I mean, I, on a personal level, quite loved, uh, qu- quite loved, or indeed loved, uh, somehow Jesus returned. <laughs> That's a Star Wars joke. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm going to go for um, Tommy the Wank Engines for his, uh, Tommy the Wank Engines, he's just the one, with his uh, penis facts, because I googled mm. the bone. And I found uh, one of those bones that was carved into a walrus at one end and a polar bear at the other, which I think oh. is quite quite cute. Oh, that's nice. That's a so penis like, bone, oh, though, it has been carved. Yeah. Hang, that's huge. That hang that on your mantelpiece. A my meter God. long, probably. That is horrifying. I don't know how I'd feel about having a penis bone on, on my mantelpiece. It's a no. penis bone with a walrus face. Pretty cute. Or just having one at all. I don't, I don't <laughs> yes. know how I feel like that. <laughs> we'll we take, have all seen... We'll take your um, whole stock. We have all seen the video of that walrus um, having a wank, though, haven't we? So, yes. Uh, we've, we've basically seen one of these in motion. Yeah. Mm. Um, regrettably. I wish I hadn't. Yeah, very regrettable. Every time you I... look upon your fireplace, you'll be reminded of the wanking walrus. <laughs> I will go for... Hmm. I lo- I'm going to go for Caroline DFS have a sale on. That was yeah, mine. That's very that's good. My choice for this week. Uh, thank you so much, Pod Squad. We appreciate you. We'll shout you out again at the end of the show. I am Thing Man this week. I am mm. in charge of the things. Peter, I would like to hear your listener submitted thing first, if that's well, okay. Of course. Only on Podiats can you say, show me your thing. Show it's me your, what's the bone called again? Baculum. baculum. Show me your baculum, yeah. yeah. Baby got baculum. <laughs> uh, this is from Idris Gazelba at Liam Piccolo on Twitter. Um, and it is according to uh, the Monmouthshire Beacon, which is presumably the Monmouthshire local news site, written by Tim Butters. Oh, hey. <laughs> and Tim Butters says that Monmouthshire man claims he has found the entrance to secret tunnel network. And there is a photo from Wikimedia Commons of a tunnel. And given that it's from Wikimedia Commons, I suspect it's not the tunnel <laughs> that's actually in the news story, but I'll send it to you anyway. Here is a picture of a tunnel. Wow, um, look at that tunnel. It's a good tunnel, isn't it? I don't think it's the one. 
For centuries, rumours have abounded that Abba Gaveni, which is hard not to say in a Welsh accent, <laughs> sits on top of a huge underground network of tunnels that were once used by everyone from Owen Glyndwyr to sex-crazed monks. <laughs> oh, oh, the sexy monk tunnel, let's go. Sex-crazed monks. Yeah. Over the years, many amateur sleuths have attempted to prove if the tunnels exist, but to no avail. Until now, and then there are five full stops. Ooh, Ooh. dot, 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 dot. <laughs> That's uh, way too many. That's, it is. That's not correct. Three or one or zero is all you need. Yeah, calm down. Yeah, please, Tim Butters. Semi-professional long-distance runner, Johnny... <laughs> sorry. Sorry. So Tim <laughs> Butters wrote this, and this sentence <laughs> is brilliant. Semi-professional long-distance runner, Johnny Turnip... <laughs> yeah, just but, you wait. This article gets so much better. <laughs> <laughs> believes he has found a portal to the hidden realms of the town and it happened by accident. Okay, well done, Johnny Turnip. <laughs> Quote, I was trying to make contact with one of the... F- Excuse me? I haven't read this ahead of time. I was trying to make contact with one of the fair folk when it happened, which I believe means fairies. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah. Okay, explained Turnip. I know that may sound like the ramblings of a lunatic, and once I would have agreed with you. However, after my hyperlinked encounter with a member of the Tilwith Tag the other week on top of the Blorange... Sorry? <laughs> Hang on, <laughs> let's break this down. What, how, t- Twilwith... Tw- Tilwith t- Tweg. Tilwith Tag. I don't know how that's pronounced. I've seen it written down many times, because I, I, do, I do read about this kind of... Fr- from a... Right, uh, Tilwith uh, Teg. A perspective of history rather than actual real stuff. But Tilwith Teg is... Sorry, I was about to tell you what a Tilwith Teg is. Yes, unless you got do. it there. No, please, please tell us. Tilwith Teg is the most usual term in Wales for the mythological creatures corresponding to the fairy folk of Welsh and Irish folklore. Yes. So he says he's found one. I believe they were... They've kind of transformed over time from just sort of historical legendary characters to now being a bit more like treated like fairies. It's a bit like as if King Arthur was now more like an elven prince in our history. I think it's that that kind of thing. Um, but uh, an encounter of a member of the Tilbwith Tag the other week on top of the Blorange. The Blorange. Um, <laughs> now, I was always taught that there are no words that rhyme with orange, but... Clearly there are. Yeah, Apart from that Blorange. teacher who, who taught at my primary school, Mr. Gorringe. Of course. Yes, indeed. Um, Blorringe, also called the Blorringe, is a prominent hill overlooking the valley of the River Usk. Um, I'm just tempted to click this hyperlink and find out about his encounter with the Tilworth Tech. <laughs> well, you just know Turnip did a full interview about oh, it. Oh, the headline, when you click on it, is Close Encounters of the Turnip Kind. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> That's and not it was even written, good. By reporter Tim Butters. Oh, it's um, just a pseudonym. It's, it's him, isn't it? <laughs> it's yeah. just him, isn't it? Uh, and there's a photo of some aliens on there. So I think, as well as meeting the Till with Tag, he's also met some aliens. Um, so what was the name of it again? It's going to be the name of the episode: Close Encounters. <laughs> Close Encounters of the Turnip <laughs> Kind! Exclamation mark is the headline. Okay, it's Good. an opinion piece, apparently. Um, oh, it was only written on the 9th of March, so it's pretty recent news as well in itself. Um, an Ab- Abergavenny, we're on a different article now, but an <laughs> Abergavenny man who headed to the Keeper's Pond to catch a glimpse of the Northern Lights last week swears down, in quotes, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, although he didn't see the Aurora Borealis, he did make contact with an alien life form. <laughs> <laughs> did did right. you fuck? Oh, did you go and ask? Um, yeah, upon arrival, he realised uh, he had not only got the date wrong. <laughs> but the- <laughs> oh, no, hang on. I've skipped a paragraph. Semi-professional long-distance runner Johnny Turnip told the Chronicle. <laughs> Why is that his byline? <laughs> that he headed up to the Blenavon Road with his trust Nikon F camera typo, to take a few snaps of the otherworldly phenomenon for a local Facebook community group page. Yet upon arrival, he realised he not only got the date wrong, well, the Northern Lights don't go by date, you just don't know what day they're going to happen. So I don't know what that means. But anyway, the two friends he'd arranged to meet there were were spitting feathers because they thought Turnip had invited them to an all-night rave as opposed to a heavenly light show. Classic Turnip. 
Big Tony and Puerto Rico Paul <laughs> were frothing the? at the mouth in rage when they realised yes. just how wrong the things had got. Puerto Paul. Rico Paul. Paul. <laughs> My God, these are just Simpsons mafia characters. Jesus. Oh, God. So they thought the Northern Lights was going to be a rave. Um, oh, it continues, but presumably he saw some aliens. I don't know. Let's go back to these tunnels. Um, right. So, however, after my encounter with a member of the Tilworth tag the other week on top of the Blorange, I'm one of the wide awake gang now. I know those mythical creatures are real, and if we had attempt to catch it, instead of fleeing the scene in fright, we could have been kings of the world. Fairies can grant wishes, see, and now we know they're real, we're going to capture one and make it do our bidding. Ooh. This man wow. is insane. Oh, so got some old friends here. Turnip reveals that alongside his brothers in arms, Big Tony and Puerto Rico Paul, his first <laughs> bid to trap and tame a Tilworth tag was a failure. He explained, We tried Big Tony's tactic of erecting this huge steel monolith-like structure on Hay Bluff to draw one in from the enchanted realms and trap it with a fishing net. Tony had spent a lot of time on top of Lord Hereford's knob as a young man. <laughs> and so, hang on. Is this a fucking parody news site? This can't be real. What's the name of the site? Uh, Monmouthshire Beacon. I'm looking at some other headlines. Multi-million pound legal claim to compensate people living near... Why? No, no it's real. It's got an address and everything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, local news at the heart of the community. Right, uh, this is real then. This is such bullshit. Right. Sorry, we will get to the end of this eventually. Where was I? Something about someone's knob? Tony had spent a lot of time on top of Lord Hereford's knob as a young man and said there's always been a lot of fairy activity in that neck of the woods. <laughs> Turnip added, I'm not sure about the science behind it, but Big Tony said a big lump of shiny steel would prove irresistible to the little folk and he knew a builder's yard <laughs> where some was going spare. <laughs> well, after carrying it up to the top of the hill and getting it in the ground, we sat there all night drinking white rum and waiting for something big to happen. But we all know, uh, sorry, but all we got was a big fat nothing. We couldn't be bothered to take it down, so we left it there for the locals to look at. Not a lot goes on in P Powys. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. So we thought uh, it'd give the natives something to talk about during the dark nights and dull days. Anyhow, once we'd left the brow, oh sorry, left bow and arrow country and made it safely back to the urban sophistication of the Mardi, we decided to revert to plan B in our bid to find a portal to the fairy realms. Turnip explained that po <laughs> that Perito Paul's mother, it says. Perito what? <laughs> so as your friends That's, call him. <laughs> yeah, that Perito Paul's mother, Pauline, or the Witch of <laughs> Tudor Street, as she was oh, once no. a <laughs> there needs There needs to be a television show about what? these people. There really does. I don't care if this is just completely made up. It's very well done. Yeah. Um, the Witch of Tudor Street, as she was once affectionately known, was well-versed in fairy lore, and so they visited her caravan just on the outskirts of Lanthony Priory for advice. Ever since they cleared the slums, the witch left Abba and has refused to return, said Turnip. She said, it's been overrun by beatniks and amateur chefs and not the town she once knew. She's lived in a caravan for years, giving tarot card readings to, fi to finance her chocolate addiction and listening to Rick Astley records. They help with her gout, apparently. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know. Turnip added, however, if you want to catch a fairy, she's your lady. Oh, my God. We we help. told her... Sorry, go on, Mikey. <laughs> I'm just saying help. <laughs> yeah, oh, help, indeed, help. <laughs> when we told her what we were planning, she was a bit dismissive and called us a bunch of goons who were meddling in the higher powers, but it was her knowledge of the ancient ways we wanted, not compliments. Turnip revealed the three of them left the caravan armed with the riddle that if they wait by the tree of winter block... Again, this is verbatim, that if they wait by the tree of winter blossom tree, by the stones of poetry in the meadow of swans near the river that named a town at the stroke of midnight, the oracle of spikes <laughs> will lead the way to the hidden realms. The oracle, oracle of, of spikes. spikes. 
I knew straight away where she meant, explained Turnip. <laughs> of she course didn't, she did. did turn it. She didn't have to dress it up in such ridiculous language, though. She could have just said, go to the grass bit near the bus station and wait. So that's exactly what we did. Unsure of what exactly we were waiting for, the three friends huddled together in Swan Meadows beneath the blossom tree and spent their time violently arguing about who would make the best wish if they did capture a fairy. <laughs> How old are these guys again? It sounds like they're they're maybe seven or eight years old. Yeah. Um, it continues now with another typo. Puerto Paul, not Puerto Rico, just Puerto Paul, said he was going to wish for a time machine, revealed Turnip. Apparently, he wants to go back to the night the Beatles played Abergavenny to find out if Paul McCartney is really his father, like he claims. <laughs> <laughs> I said to the I said to the dozy tart, think what you'd have to witness to prove your dad is really a Beatle. It wouldn't be pleasant. Mm. Turnip added, Big Tony had a better wish. He wanted to be the owner of the biggest construction company in the UK. It's a nice... <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice idea for a man with a strong worth ethic, uh, work ethic, but limited abilities like tone. But it still stinks of a small town mentality. When I revealed my wish would be to become a god, you could see them growing <laughs> suspicious. Failing to think big has always been their problem. The Three Musketeers' reverie was eventually broken by a rustling coming from a nearby tree, and in the moonlight, what looked like a small mythical creature appeared and made tentative movements towards them. We're nearly at the end, I promise. Okay. Turnip recalled, Big Tony grabbed his net and was about to pounce when Puerto Paul screamed, Leave it alone, you big lump. It's a bloody hedgehog. <laughs> you can imagine our disappointment, explained Turnip. We came for the... We came for the wings and we got the spikes. The hedgehog wandered by all brazen and gave us a contemptuous scowl that seemed to suggest, not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm not familiar with that phrase. <laughs> all right. However, uh, when we followed the oracle of spikes, that's the hedgehog, we found something a lot better than a fairy. We found the secret entrance to Abergavenny's lost network of tunnels to be continued. What the hell? What? <laughs> this, is, this is just well, not a like like story. This? That felt like a children's story. <laughs> that was so, so colourful. This is under the, I just noticed, this is also under the opinion label rather than news. So I think maybe Tim Butters is just writing a very strange work of fiction, like an episodic, like a serial. Yeah. But I don't under know. Under the opinions that... Can He's written some interesting stuff. Zombies would much prefer Monmouthshire to Powys, study <laughs> finds. <laughs> Don't know what that Opinion. means. Opinion. What? <laughs> no, news. That's news. Oh, That's right. news, of That's course. Real. Yeah. That's real. God, Jesus. What a strange thing. Well, we, while you're reading that, I did Google Mr. Turnip just to see if there's anything else floating around from him. Could I quickly read a few lines from another article about Mr. Please Turnip? Do. Um, this t this is from the Abergavenny Chronicle. Uh, the, t the headline right. reads: "Abba athlete believes sunstroke triggered vivid hallucinations." And I'm just going to read a couple of lines. Well, from he's it. an athlete now, is he? Oh yeah, well, not, not semi-professional. The, the way he the way he approaches running, you'll think he's an athlete. Um, okay. Turnip, who claims to average 92 miles a day, had just finished his late afternoon run and was wandering around Abergavenny Castle with his celebratory four-pack of Stella when he began to feel a tad peculiar. N <laughs> How many miles a day? 92! 92 what? miles a day. That's not out of the realm of possibility, but maybe when you're down in a four-pack of Stella at a castle at the end of it, it might be a bit tricky. <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> Sorry, can I just... There's a couple more lines here, and I think it paints a beautiful picture of this man. Uh, Turnip explained, I had nothing on but a pair of hot pants and my Nike Airs, but I was still dripping in sweat like a fat bird in a curry house. Uh, because it was a proper boiler, I was necking the Stella like a rabid dog. And just as, as I was emptying the last can and savouring the last few drops of Belgium's finest, my legs suddenly turned to lead and I fell flat on my back. And it goes on to talk about some of the hallucin hallucinations he had. But I... Who is this man? <laughs> is this I, a, I'm... This is I'm so also, confused. This article's from 2018 as well, so this might be a long-running in in a in inside joke with some dudes in Wales. <laughs> yeah, I mean, weirdly, I've just done a Google for Mon Monmouthshire tunnels, and on the 5th of March 2021, so three years ago, almost to the day, there was a story um, 
written up by ITV News, so more reputable, <laughs> about a secret tunnel being found by some some like uh, power workers, like people who were digging uh, for utilities. They found um, a tunnel system dating back to the 18th century. But oh. I don't know if that's... I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. This is very confusing. Um, because no news article in which a man has discovered tunnels ends without any reference to the tunnels and the words to be continued. There was no yes. they didn't talk about the tunnels there at all in that story. They found a hedgehog yeah. and and then yeah. that was it. Well, very I mean- very weird. Indeed. We're keeping my eyes on the uh, Monmouthshire beacon and see what comes next. <laughs> yeah, I hope thrilling. we get a second part. <laughs> How odd. I want to know what happens. Well, well thanks, Tim wonderful. Butters. And, yes, uh, thank you, Tim. <laughs> yes, Tim. <laughs> and uh, thank you to the person who sent that in. Um, it was uh, Idris Gazelba. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Mikey, would you like to uh, tell us all about your thing? I'd love to. Um, I've got a little thing here about one of the most amazing starts to a battle that I think may ever be recorded in history. Okay. Ooh. And this is taken from a Cracked.com article. Uh, no one wants to fight a crazy dude. Even if you're already mentally prepared uh, to take some damage in a physical fight, if you figure out that your opponent is a certified freak, you might instead offer a ceasefire just to save yourself. You just know that biting and pulling of sensitive parts will be involved. And now, oh yeah, imagine this on the grandest scale. Two sides gearing up for a historical battle. Nerves at an all-time high. Archers ready. When the opposition sends out a single man to do some weird shit, your tactics melt like butter, replaced with a mixture of confusion and rage. And this is exactly what happened at the Battle of the Hastings in the year 1066. Oh. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Battle Battle of the Hastings. <laughs> Why did I say Battle of the Hastings? Is it just yeah. oh, ba- Battle of Hastings? Battle of Hastings. Battle the Hastings. of Hastings well, Direct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two opposing Hastings 1066. families. <laughs> That's the yeah, forever. I don't remember the rest of the number, but 1066. Oh, 800 double O. Low. Right. Ten, is it? Isn't that easy? God, yeah. four numbers used to be so short. Oh, yeah. All right. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> Memory lane there. Um, so yeah, this wasn't some little side squabble. It was a showdown between English and Norman soldiers that would end with the Normans taking control of England. Mm. A, ba- mm-hmm. a battle in which the first blow was struck not by a brave commander or a charging foot soldier, but by a minstrel. Immediately after a juggling act. Wow. <laughs> Whoa. Did not know this. <laughs> it's, yeah, this is absolutely like I, I did like do my research and I looked this up and multiple different sources corroborated the details of this. So there's a good chance this happened. I'm, I'm not gonna say it ex- happens exactly as it's portrayed here, but it's something, something pretty rad happened on the battlefield that day. Hmm. Uh, so this mad lad in question was a guy by the name of Talifa. Um so with troops at the ready. The battle not yet begun. Talifer saw his time to shine and walked out solo into no man's land. He started singing a song called the Chanson de Roland. Um, I don't know if, if, if you want some um, background ambience, I'm going to send over um, a, a, a version of the song so you can um, listen to this if you so please. <laughs> I might put oh, this in okay. the background of the podcast just to... There's a, there's a big chunk of text coming up that te- foretells the the tale of this this battle, so this makes okay. a good ambiance. Um, uh, yeah, the song is a certified banger. Uh, but this wasn't entirely outlandish, given that it's not like songs weren't often used to motivate warriors into battle. What was weird was that at the same time, he began a sword and spear juggling act that, according to records, was extremely cool. Um, extremely cool. <laughs> extremely That's cool. That's what it said on the bio tapestry, right? Yeah. <laughs> According to historical records. <laughs> it was really cool. There's just um, like 2D pictures of people dabbing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> One of them's got an arrow in his eye, but he doesn't care. <laughs> Uh, Talifer's out, everybody get ready. Uh, so now it's time for the actual kind of historical bit of the article. This is quoted from historian Jeffrey Gamar, and he offers a description of Talifer's little pre-show battle in his book, History of the English. 
His name was Talifer, a minstrel juggler of considerable courage. He was armed and mounted on a fine horse, an intrepid and noble warrior. Placing himself in front of the others, he performed amazing feats before the English. He, he seized his spear by the butt, just as if it had been a little stick, threw it up high into the air, and caught it again as it, uh, by its point as it fell. Three times he tossed the spear up this way, and by the time he raised it for the fourth time, he had come so close to the opposing enemies uh, that he hurled it straight into the English and wounded one of the English troops as it drove into his body. So he started off with this, whoop, throwing a spear, like, whoop, whoop. edge closer. Whoop, whoop. They just let him keep getting closer because they were probably re really impressed. They were like, oh. Cool. This guy's sick. He's extremely cool. <laughs> um, and so once you think maybe after he drove a spear into someone, the other side would begin the battle. But no, Talifer stepped back, drew his sword, then threw it high into the air and caught it again as it fell. People who saw him do this uh, said to each other that the feats he was performing before their eyes were nothing short of magic. <laughs> wow. He just carried there's someone with a spear in him now, and they're just like, do another one. Come wait, wait, on. Give, give him a minute, he's going to do something really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, this dude did like the me medieval equivalent of whipping out a butterfly knife and doing some mad tricks yeah. in someone's face, and then just proceeding to stab into someone's gut. Um, of course, once he landed this knife um sorry caught this um sword after it thrown up into the air shit was properly on and uh Talifer was almost instantly and unsurprisingly overrun and killed oh. no <laughs> but, um, it went out like like an absolute boss though I mean, yeah, maybe he saw the writing on the walls he just thought maybe this isn't going to be a good battle at least I'm going to go out in style and boy did he so Talifer we salute you and your mad stunts with sharp yeah. objects on his pedal bike amazing <laughs> man after our own heart something about the the uh, not that wasn't the English Civil War was it no what was that called that that, that era where they were deciding what king who, who gets to be the new king in The War of the Roses? Oh, no. No, I don't think it's the War of the Roses. It's the Battle um, of Hastings, wasn't it? What's the... Yeah, but there were... I don't know if it was a... Oh, it was just the Viking invasions of England, apparently, is the name of the ongoing conflict. Um, okay. But it was something about that period uh, bred interesting <laughs> individuals because also in 1066, I remember reading about this as a kid, um, at the Battle of Stamford Bridge... Uh, there was a. They were literally fighting over an actual bridge, Stamford Bridge, like a, an important river crossing, and um, they came together. Where is this? Uh, hang on. The English advance was delayed by the need to pass through the chokehold point presented by the bridge itself. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle and the Chronicle of Henry of Huntington has it that one of the Norwegians, possibly an uh, possibly armed with a Dane axe, blocked the narrow crossing and single-handedly held up the entire English army. <laughs> this guy he's referred to as like the berserker of Stamford Bridge, apparently. Oh my god. Uh, the story is that this Viking alone cut down up to 40 Englishmen and was only defeated when an English soldier floated under the bridge in a barrel and thrust his spear up through the planks of the bridge, mortally wounding the warrior. His wow. name was not preserved in the, in the aftermath of this battle. But... God, all these 1066 battles had, like, this one celebrity doing something really <laughs> <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> something completely mad. Oh, God. My God. Wow, yeah, I guess every battalion has its character, and sometimes I think, let's let's send him out on his own and get him out of the way, because he's a bit annoying in the barracks doing all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's get him but, dead, shall we? God, your, your guy, Mikey, like, you'd think more people would know about him, given that it was the actual Battle of Hastings, which is one of, like, the most famous battles in, like, English history. Yeah, um, I mean, he's got he's got his he own Wikipedia. He's got a Wikipedia article as well. And I think honestly, the highlight of his life was that one instance. But yeah, yeah I think yeah. there's some songs written about him. There's a tapestry of him. So he's 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 done all right for history for some for doing some sick tricks with his swords. God, they should have definitely taught us that at school. It would have, you know, <laughs> set the really set the scene for the Battle of Hastings. Got people interested. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Thank you very much, boys. That is my thing. Amazing. Mm. Thank you, Michael. Brilliant. 
Time for my viewer slash listener submitted thing. This comes courtesy of uh, Matthew Knight at Matthew 47130720. Great username on Twitter. Mm. And it's an article from the Irish Mirror. Mum. Oh, there's a typo in the fucking headline. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Mums. Spots face of Jesus in bird poo on her car window. Oh no, mums. Oh. <laughs> mums. Uh, bird poo is capitalised, like all caps in the headline. In bird poo? Bird poo? Breaking Claudia, poos. Claudia Cooper, 43, was astonished to see the instantly recognisable image of Christ on her car's window. Would you like to see Jesus? I would love to see Jesus in poo. Please. If you hover over it, it uh, there's a caption that pops up that says, Messianic mess, the Jesus-like bird poo. Here we are. Here's somehow Jesus returned. There he is. Looking Jesus like Christ! <laughs> what? No! <laughs> That's not even good. Like, a lot of these things, when they, you know, it's like toast or whatever, or on a cornflake, it does actually look like Jesus, but that looks like the scream. Yeah. It does, yeah. Yeah, it's like screams uh, growing his hair out a bit. Good God. Yeah. yeah, that's just terrifying. Or like, yeah, it looks more like Karl Marx, I'd say, than anything. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> a bit. Do you want to learn some more? Yes. A mum was astonished after she spotted the perfectly formed face of Jesus, hyphen, in a bird poo. What? Amused Claudia Cooper, 43, was returning to her car when she saw the instantly recognisable image of Christ. The smear on the front window of her white BMW 2 looks exactly like the, like the Son of God, and the family are hoping it brings them good luck. <laughs> Mum of two, Claudia, from Crowthorn, Berkshire, and then it's just a colon and a quote, doesn't, it doesn't say said, uh, we were walking back to the car after watching a friend's son in a hockey match and spotted it straight away. We just thought it was really funny. It was just hilarious. It was so perfect in shape. I'm having to expand the article now and now i'm getting loads of pop-ups mm -hmm. uh we just we just all couldn't stop laughing it's a pity the bottom of his face seems to have slipped down but it's still very funny <laughs> when we got home all the neighbors had a laugh too and the kids keep showing it to their friends <laughs> oh god clean your car the, <laughs> the divine dropping happened while the car was parked <laughs> close to wellington college in crowthorn or maybe crowthorn on saturday afternoon Furniture shop worker Claudia and her, and her husband David, 37, a plumber, haven't, that's important, haven't washed the car, and sons Sam, 10, and Josh, 5, have been showing their friends the mark. It's still on the car because we haven't had any rain, she said. <laughs> uh, the old wife's tale says that it is good luck to be pooed on by a bird, so the Cooper family are hoping the Jesus-shaped dropping will do the same for them. I certainly hope it will, said Claudia. You would like to think so. And that's the end of the article. It wow. does not look like Jesus. Not really, no. Like, yeah, like, I'm gonna send. I'm just gonna reiterate the Karl Marx point because it just, it does, like, it's the shape of <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, it's hair, very. It's just like a slightly stretched Karl Marx. Yeah, because so... the dark, like, there's a big, <laughs> like, empty patch on the bird poo, but that could be his his dark mustache. You're right, yeah. Mikey. It is Karl Marx. All right, let's get back to the papers. Let's let's <laughs> let's do a correction. <laughs> You've got it wrong, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's Carl. It's, it's been a long time since we've had a Jesus-shaped uh, object in the news on Podiats, at least. And I mean, mm -hmm. still today we've not quite had that. But <laughs> it's, yeah. oh, I'm a big fan. It's it's amazing seeing them stretch it out as long as they can. I just the image of them going home hurriedly telling the neighbours, "Come, come look at the Jesus shape nice, on the car." <laughs> oh, it's hilarious. We all laughed. <laughs> Should have done what they did in that Simpsons episode and just park it in the garage and charge people to come in. Yeah, build a shrine. <laughs> See the Jesus poo. Uh, but there we are. That is my uh, viewer submitted thing. Thank you very much. I believe that was Matthew uh, who sent that in. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Thank let you. me check. I'm just vamping for time while I just double check. It was Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. Brilliant. Peter Austin, it's yes. time for your thing. It is. Um, I have got a bit of an article here that we don't need to read in full because basically it's all just in the headline, but it will mm. lead into uh, an extra bit of stuff that I brought along. Uh, this is according to skynews.com. Um, they're all high, colon. Rats eat marijuana from police evidence room. Good for them. 
Yes. Rat droppings have been found on officers' desks in the New Orleans, New Orleans, New Orleans police headquarters, which have been taken over by mold and cockroaches, according to the department. Um, rats that managed to get into the evidence room at a decaying police headquarters building have been eating confiscated marijuana, the New Orleans police chief has said. The rats are eating our marijuana. They're all high, she told city council members on Wednesday. The uncleanliness in the building is off the charts. And that's it. There's no sort of amusing stories of rats, you know, like getting the munchies and eating Cheetos or anything like that. But It's um, just shit here. <laughs> yeah, it's just shit here. From the understanding, the biology of the rat and how it's somewhat similar to us, I would think based on the amount or concentration they take in, it would be somewhat similar to what humans experience, Mr. Harrison said, who I think is... Some sort of expert in rat High doping rats. or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it got me thinking um, about animals getting high and uh, which animals do it and why and how. Because we mm. all know about dolphins biting puffer fish, don't we? I think that's quite often sort of uh, spoken about on the internet. There's like a, a blowfish and dolphins like to take in a small amount of the toxin and it apparently makes them high. But I've got... An article here from Zamnesia, written by Adam Parsons. And this has a list of 10 animals that like to get high or engage in some kind of recreational substance use. Uh, and the the rat and the dolphin does not eat, they don't, they don't appear, either of them. So we're going to learn about some more animals that like to enjoy a bit of the gange or equivalent. <laughs> it's good. I like it. Humans love to get high and apparently animals as well. While we're always busy enjoying and exploring new highs, many animals have become proficient stoners themselves. <laughs> Elephants are very intelligent and socially complex animals. They mourn the death of a family member, feel emotions such as joy and depression, and teach their young in order to pass knowledge down through the generations. What this means, though, is that ele- what this means, though, is that elephants can learn what gets them high, get enjoyment from it, and then teach their young to follow suit. Elephants have learned that, o- that overripe and fermenting fruit, such as that of the marula tree, will get them drunk. Whilst the idea of elephants stumbling around in a drunken haze may be amusing to some, it's actually causing an increasing alcoholism problem amongst elephants in oh, both no. India and Africa. <laughs> What's more, because elephants are pretty intelligent because of increasing interactions between our two species, they've learned that where there are humans, there is also alcohol. What makes this scary is that elephants are mean drunks. There are reports of groups of elephants literally raiding and destroying villages in the drunken rage in their continuing quest for booze. Oh my god, no. When it comes to drugs, elephants have also acquired a taste for the iboga plant, a powerful hallucinogen. They will eat it to get a pleasurably a pleasurably trippy high whenever they find it. And because the young learn from the old, it becomes a family event. That's got to be the scariest animal to be tripping balls <laughs> is a massive bloody elephant. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Either that or cocaine bear. But <laughs> yeah, an elephant would be pretty scary. Bees. Turns out the life of a worker drone is not all it's cracked up to be. It doesn't say be like that. It just says it with one E. Damn it. <laughs> Missed a trick there. Uh, and what do they turn to in order to take some of the weight off their shoulders? Well, alcohol, of course. Scientists have found that bees seem to have a natural draw to the sweet embrace of fermenting fruit and sugars. They've also found in lab studies where constant supply is given, bees will develop an alcohol addiction. The only thing that appears to be stopping them from developing severe problems in the wild is the pressure of the hive to keep feeding the colony, and possibly the bouncers. No joke. The bees, whose usual job it is to keep out unwanted pests from the hive, such as wasps, will also stop drunk members of the colony from entering until they sober up. Wow. Report- wow. Reports suggest they even go as far as to chew off the legs of repeat offenders. That's oh, a bit too cool. far. Okay, that happened to me at a club once. I kept trying to get in. They were like, no, I'm going to eat your leg. <laughs> Is this legs? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Wallabies. Within the last few years, there have been a growing report. Uh, there have been growing reports of Australian wallabies ransacking medical poppy fields. Um, that's where heroin comes from. Well, opium. <laughs> Australia is responsible for supplying 50% of the world's poppy slash opium to be used in the creation of medications such as morphine and other painkillers. 
These willing marsupials have learnt that these crops can act as more than just a source of food. Reports describe how the wallabies will gorge themselves on poppies, spending the rest of the day hopping around the field, creating crop circles whilst high as a kite. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds lovely. Horses. Uh, Loco weed is a family of weeds that can be found in North America. It's a mind-altering drug that's highly addictive to horses. What's sad about this weed, though, is it's also poisonous. It's reported that during the harsher winter months, loco weed is one of the only things that will grow, giving some horses that are left in paddocks very little option but to eat it. They'll start off eating it like they would anything else for its nutritional value, but they soon end up getting hooked and actively seeking it out. The constant consumption of loco weed will kill a horse over a few years, so ranchers have to keep an eye out. Detoxing a horse can also be very dangerous. Uh, can also be a very dangerous affair. Much like as with humans, withdrawal symptoms can really bring out the worst in them. Most owners have to keep their horses sedated until it's fully left their systems. Oh no, poor horses. Um, so each of these uh, items in the list has the name of the animal, and then also the th- the substance that we're about to talk about. The next one is bears. Mushrooms and jet fuel. Oh. So I don't know how they're sourcing that, but we're about to find out. Okay. Um, while sounding like quite a combination, this is not something that happens in tandem. There are reports that bears have been eating Amanita muscari- muscaria in order to get high, presumably in North America, where this type of mushroom is most commonly found. This is, however, uh, this this is. No, this is what it says. This is, however, has very little real evidence to back this up. Good. Okay, yeah. Uh, What there is evidence of, however, is bears getting high off jet fuel in Russia. Apparently, bears are bears are sniffing empty cans of kerosene and gasoline left at the Kronotsky Nature Reserve in the far east of Russia. The fuel is used to power helicopters used by the reserve's workers... But the bears have found a much better use for it. They've been documented taking huge whiffs of it, digging themselves a shallow hole, and then lying in it on their backs, <laughs> legs and arms outstretched in a sedated stupor. <laughs> God. Jeez, that's amazing. Just looking at the stars. Yeah. That sounds quite uh, nice. Yeah. Bighorn sheep. Within the rocky wilderness of Canada lives a very unique and rare species of lichen, a lichen that has a, p- a potent psychedelic quality because of its rarity and extremely uh, and because of its rarity, it is extremely hard to find. It is reported to take decades to grow even on a single rock. However, it appears to be a rare find worth pursuing. The bighorn sheep native to the area will li- risk life and limb to get it. What's really surprising, though, is the lichen has absolutely no nutritional value for these sheep. They are literally chasing a high. Oh. Reindeer. Uh, they'll eat all kinds of vegetation to survive, but it turns out one of the things they like to eat is Amanita muscaria. Those are the ones we just talked about with the bears. They are, I believe, the classic red toadstools with white spots on. That's what those are. Um uh, reindeer can't actually metabolize the psychedelic compounds of the mushroom, which is why Nordic shamans who use mushrooms for spiritual visions would feed the mushroom to reindeer and then harvest their urine for later psychedelic uses. Ooh. In addition to this, it seems the reindeer love the experience. Scientists believe that reindeer actively seek out the mushrooms to keep themselves occupied during the long winters. Why didn't they um, just eat the mushrooms themselves rather than filtering it through the deer into yeah, its face? Yeah, it feels, like, seems, a, a bit weird. feels yeah. like a an excuse for something from mm. someone who got caught. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, I'm drinking this reindeer piss because... Uh, it's I'm a psychedelic like, thing. It's, it's how yeah. I take my drugs. It's way purer yeah. this way. Why are you holding the, the reindeer penis? Don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> it's for work. It's, <laughs> it's a work. It's a prank, bro. It's just a video. <laughs> Uh, the next one is cats and cat mint, uh, which I think we're all aware of. And this has turned out to be quite a lengthy article. So I'll move on to the one after that. Uh, capuchin monkeys and lemurs like to eat hallucinogenic millipedes, apparently. <laughs> uh, several species of millipedes will secrete a poison when they feel threatened. Monkeys and lemurs are found they can cover themselves with this poison, warding off parasites and getting high at the same time. Uh, however, nothing in life is free, and users of millipede venom can certainly end up paying a price. It's filled with cyanide. 
This oh. means that the monkeys and lemurs run a very high risk of death when they dabble in millipede. But when has a little bit of danger ever stopped anyone? <laughs> and finally, we've got jaguars. Um, jaguars, much like smaller cats, eat green vegetation to force regurgitation, thereby cleansing their digestive systems. But it appears this big cat discovered something that does more than just cleanse the stomach. Cuppy is to jaguars what catnip is to our domestic cats. They just can't seem to get enough of it. It has them rolling around the rainforest floor, hallucinating and tripping out of their wits. The cuppy vine acts as an MAOI, heightening the senses and in large doses causing a psychedelic experience on its own. And indeed, among Ayahuasca explorers, the jaguar is considered a very special animal. It's said with sufficient skill, a shaman can transform into a jaguar. A much sought-after power, apparently. And that's just how the article ends. <laughs> you drink enough rain, reindeer piss and you'll be, you'll be a jaguar. a jaguar. You'll be whatever you want. Drink yeah. your piss, sniff your kerosene, you'll be on your way to being unstoppable. Oh, mm-hmm. You can't have your dessert. Until you drink your piss. You can't have your potato skins. Yeah. (laughs) Oh my God, amazing. There you go. They're all getting high out there. It's not just the rats in the police station. (laughs) But I think the rats in the police station are doing it right. (laughs) I think so. Fantastic. Thank you, Peter. You're welcome. Michael Johnson, I would like to hear your listener slash viewer submitted thing. Absolutely. This one comes from Glenn Donnelly at Funky Cobra on Twitter. And uh, I think a couple of episodes ago, we discussed the Florida Man games, if that rings any bells for you guys. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Gravy Bay. Florida Bay. Uh, I am pleased to announce that the first annual Florida Man games were everything we could have hoped for and more, says Quinn Eaton of whiskeyriff.com whoa <laughs> Whiskey everybody's favorite news site uh, here we go how did it take this long for the florida man games to come together for years headlines that include florida man and or florida woman have dominated the news space and someone finally put an event together in the sunshine state to crown one florida man supreme <laughs> this is the florida man yeah uh, When news first broke later last year that this uh, competition would be held in 2024, I happily reported that the Florida Man Olympics, loose term, would include some of the following challenges. Weaponized pool noodle mud jewel. Category 5 cash grab. Um, I think think that's like a little tornado after trying to grab cash. Evading arrest obstacle course. Beer belly Florida sumo. (laughs) And the mullet contest. Wow. Yes. <laughs> what a That's lineup. What I'm there for. <laughs> All of those promised events occurred, as did some additional features that must oh. have been added on later in the planning. Good God. Based on some other reports out of the Florida Man games that took place in St. Augustine, Florida, alligator shows and, oh no, alligator selfie photo ops were big oh. hits during the proceedings. Now, please, come on, don't. Mm, that's silly that's silly <laughs> jesus come on come on little my little five-year-old son come stand next to this heavily sedated crocodile and let's get a photo mm. good times soon we'll be in the headline as a, a, a florida man yes yeah. uh, but what people were really there for above everything else were the multitude of florida men competing against one another in challenges inspired by some close classic florida man shenanigans uh, the, ev- the event officially got kicked off with an electric Star Spangled Banner performance, which was riffed out by an electric, uh, riffed out on an electric guitar by a man wearing an American flag tank top. Hell, of course. yeah, brother. Makes you proud to be British. <laughs> <laughs> One of the competitors that was interviewed, James Gordon, said that he was there to win and added this legendary quote when asked about the games themselves. I've lived in Florida my whole life. Oh, I can't. Oh, that sounds. Uh, I'm gonna keep going with it. I've lived in Florida my whole life. They're calling these events. I'm calling this a shit Tuesday afternoon. Wait, <laughs> sorry. This shit a Tuesday afternoon. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Just, there Not we go. a Got shit it. Tuesday afternoon. It's a really good Tuesday afternoon, <laughs> uh, actually. This is just a standard Tuesday afternoon for your boy James Gordon. 
Um, that quote alone puts Gordon on the short list of greatest athletes of all time. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Turnip over here would yeah, like Mr. to argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon won the barbecue pork and sausage speed eating events. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, and as for some of the other contests that took place, you'll have to take a look at the video below. Excuse no. Okay, let's wait. I'm going to send on the video. Let's see if um, anything gets mentioned in here. I'm going to quickly skim through. Um, it just looks like, okay, here's the, oh my God, the underwhelming performance of the Star Spangled Banger in the man in a, a tank top. Um, there he some, is, yeah. Uh, oh, God. Sausage eating contests. Uh, act- bicycle, they're on a bike now. The, these, the activities involve brawling, drinking, gunfire, reptile wrangling, and others that carry a risk of jail or jail time or intensive cares. Looks like What's there's the men. What's the bicycle one where they've got a second bicycle attached so, to their so the one they're riding? I think that's just it. I think you just have to cycle with a bike in your hand. I feel like maybe this is a game where they have to replicate stealing a bike. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> oh, they're a bit rough in that oh, paddling yeah. pool, aren't they? Oh my god. The, yeah, yeah, the mud wrestling is just dirty water. It's not actual mud. <laughs> All the mud's just other. in the background of the mud pool. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Proper Loads hammer. of people there. Oh, there's James Gordon! Yeah, he looks like a James Gordon. Big, big bushy beard on that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I'm going to continue the article. Last bit of the article. Not sure if you caught that Star Spangled ba- Banner clip, but that was legendary hurricane chaser Lane Pittman on hand for the national anthem. I know Lane him yes. well. <laughs> or her. Lane, it looks like a him. Lane has made a name for himself head, head banging in the middle of hurricanes. Holy <laughs> shit. And also went viral after he got arrested for playing the national anthem Jimi Hendrix style in Neptune Beach on the 4th of July back in 2015. So this is a certified dude. Mm. Wow. So he just goes to where hurricanes are happening and rocks out. And I I respect him for that. God bless. God bless Florida. Um, And that that is the results of the Florida man competition. They ate sausages and fought each other in the mud. What a day. It's a shame they didn't crown an ultimate Florida man out of every, mm. you know, just the Florida man of them all. That's what I would have liked to have seen. Yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's a first attempt, isn't it? It's first year. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, they'll some, get there. Some way they can improve. Yeah. yeah you've got, you've got to give people a reason to come back. You want to dethrone the last Florida mm. man. Mm. But, yeah. Well, yeah. Next time we'll see. Um, thank you very much, Glenn Donnelly, Funky Cobra, for sending that in. Thank you, Absolutely. Mikey. Thank you, Mikey. It's now time for my thing. In the spirit of cross-promotion and brand synergy, and after that one person asked for us to bring back questions and we said no, I thought it might be nice to turn to brand new social media platform, Instagram. I don't know if you've heard of Instagram. It's quite a new one. It's not been around for very long. You can follow us on there at vidiots.official where we post all sorts of stuff including things like this we actually requested some questions i have some quick fire questions for us to answer are you guys ready oh okay okay let's go that is my thing my thing is just a a little we're going to dip our toes back into the old ways and just uh, sample a selection of questions that people submitted are you ready right yeah fingers on buzzers let me let me get to the right page first okay here we go Drop Tuned Prodigy asks, "What is the worst of the worst games you ever played on Vidiots?" God, uh, I think it was a Vidiots one. Robin Hood's Quest is one that always comes to mind. But I think that was that, that was, was triple, triple jump. jump. Oh no, that was well, a triple um, jump. One. I'll box. say Hulk Hogan's main event. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that was bad. Um, Fight Box, the one that never even made it to being published because it was just too bad, and also because yeah. the video corrupted. Yeah, video yeah we played that on up, Triple Jump it? recently on Worst oh. Games Ever. It finally, finally made it, but yeah, that was really bad. Um, Have you got one, Peter? I've, I've no, I, I, I was, I kind of agree with Fight Box actually, but uh, <laughs> or maybe Lassie was kind of bad. It's hard to remember them all. Oh, that Charlotte's was Web jump. was awful. Char- that was triple oh, jump. Oh, yeah. Was it? Oh, Are these God. all triple jump? I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, don't know. <laughs> is my answer. <laughs> They're all bad. Billy, Billy Wizard. Sun- Wizard Billy. Oh, yeah. Broomstick Rocket Broomstick Racing. Racing. 
Did yeah. you Santa Claus saves the world? Uh, I think no, that so. Was triple yes, jump. I think that was that, the no, last, that one thing, of the last ones. No, it was just did. before we just before yeah. we finished. I think we changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah just changed. Before we changed. Okay, cool. Uh, Jimmy Cottom asks, "What food slash meal would be your go-to if you had to take part in an eating challenge?" Ooh. Ooh. I mean, I I can I can put away pizza pretty well. Yeah. yeah. Crisps. I reckon crisps. A crisps. Lot of crisps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can always <laughs> eat more crisps, one. can't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I would go with hash browns. Okay. Shout. Any sauce Shove on the side or just dry, there. dry browns? Just dry, just dry as that. No, probably some sauce as well. But I would eat as many hash browns as I could in a certain amount of time. I'd, I could give that a go, I reckon. Mm-hmm. Probably. Uh, not that Lewis says, what are your favourite naming conventions and trends, and then in brackets, Caroline, to come from the pod squad? <laughs> oh. Um, I mean, Caroline I think- is, is definitely up there for me. Definitely, yeah. I liked a lot of them. The Cheggers puns we had for a good long time, like Cheggers yeah. and Yeah, that was a good, good run. I yeah. always like when someone references uh, something from the previous episode. I think that's mm. always fun. And every and time we forget. It. Yeah, we normally forget. That's probably why I enjoy it so much. Like, what is that about? One time we refunded one of them because we thought we didn't get the context and we thought it was really maybe rude or insensitive, yeah. but it wasn't. It was a reference to literally what we'd done in the previous episode, but we couldn't remember. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, yeah. I agree with Mikey. Uh, I like the fake country names with Poddy, its friends in like Czechoslovakia. Oh, yeah. Very good. Enjoy that a lot. Uh, Maxi Bask uh, says, if the king kicked you out, where would you go to live? Oh, man. Uh... I'd go live in the woods with the gnomes in their little cars. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, maybe the Republic of Ireland, or I quite like the climate here is the thing. Yeah. I know it's obviously kind of grey and horrible but I also I prefer it to being really humid or really hot or really cold so mm. I wouldn't want to go too far and I would also quite like to be somewhere where I speak the language so mm. you know yeah, I would island. like to go somewhere warmer slash sunnier but it has to have decent internet air conditioning and no neighbours that's my, that's my <laughs> choice okay. you know sometimes when you go on holiday to a hot country and you see these these little houses that are completely white and they're just like dotted on the hills. You're like, mm. who lives there? Mm. You never see anyone going, that's where I want to live. That's one of my yeah. houses. Okay, I think it's a serious answer. I'm going to, I'm just going to say uh, Brussels or Belgium, something like that oh, would be quite nice. Lovely. Like, yeah, it seems, uh, again, I think I agree with Peter. I like the climate here. So I just want that, but not here. So yeah, <laughs> move along the longitude of the earth a bit. Bam, there you go. Excellent. Uh, Hans Dominic Asks, what do you think Caroline looks like? <laughs> oh, oh. Um, I kind what? of picture Lorraine from the London area when I think yeah. of Caroline. I'm picturing like blonde, short bob, um, glass glasses like those thin kind of wireframe glasses. Oh, so she sort of wants to see the manager, that kind yeah. of. But not not total, not total manager seeker. Just like okay. she's got a hint of it about her. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. I when I think of Caroline, I'm I'm rewatching Superstore at the moment, which is a sitcom, and there's a someone who works at the store called Oh Pippa's brought me a hair bubble. Thank you. I can't Aww. right now, but in a bit. Um, called <laughs> Carol. Funnily enough, um. and uh, Carol looks like this, and and I think that's sort of what I imagine Caroline looking. Like, Ooh, because she right. is a bit of a she's a bit of a Karen, a bit of a sociopath as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I I imagine it's yeah someone with sort of long dark hair, maybe sort of middle aged, um, yeah, slightly threatening energy. That's your one as well. <laughs> okay. Um, Jamie Barker Star says sometimes you guys joke about not enjoying this podcast and wanting to stop. Do you actually want to stop? <laughs> <laughs> like we did did earlier in this exact episode. Oh, dear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, we don't want to stop. It's it's always a joke. Uh, it is. It's it's a privilege actually, mm. and it's it's really nice to be able to do. Well, for one thing, it's a nice way to keep in touch with uh, Mikey J. Yeah. I think all the way down Johnson. here. Yeah, because <laughs> um, I'm rubbish, and like even if I really want to keep in touch with various friends, I just sort of don't because I, I I'm just not. 
I'm not wired that way. I don't think to do it. So if I didn't have a reason, I would definitely not hear as much from Mikey oh. through no fault of either of us. I'm sure. Yes, yeah, consider this like your your visitation rights for me, yeah. the child, Michael Johnson. <laughs> and it's always uh, you know it's nice to interact with the audience and hear what yeah. the weird news is this week. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. Well, Keep the spirit of idiots alive. Yeah, damn right. By reading articles about Jesus-shaped objects. Ah, that's yes. what, yeah, there we go. That's why we started Vidiots. That's why it's we keep always the goal. It's always, it's always a joke. If we, we do occasionally say, this fucking podcast, but, you know, it's... It's been six years. We're allowed a little bit of Tom Fury. Yeah, we're allowed to be grumpy. <laughs> yeah, and when it's like 8pm and, you know, we want our tea, you know, that's sometimes when we're feeling like, okay, can I, yeah, I want to go and have my tea now. <laughs> Next question. This is the penultimate question. By God, it's Jake asked, you've been put to death. What's your final meal? Three courses and a drink. Butterfield diet optional. Oh, that was me. Three courses. Bear in mind that you might overdo it. You might be tempted to overdo it with one of your courses and then you won't have any room. Yeah. yeah. I really like if I know I'm going to die, I'll just like use it as a challenge to see just how much food I could shove in me. So I don't mm. think a full tum tum is going to stop me. Mm. Oh. You want to explode in the chair. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You like want I'd, it to I'd... smell delicious as they electrocute you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just eat a bunch of raw foods and cook inside of me <laughs> like a hot pot. Um, a hot pot. <laughs> I have a question for you, Mikey. <laughs> Hello. If you knew you were going to die, would you compromise your morals and ethics and eat something non-vegan or would you stick with it right to the end? I reckon I'd probably crack. I, yeah, why Would you, not? <laughs> you were oh, just yeah. going yeah. for some cheese. <laughs> yeah, why not? I've put it off this long. I'm going to die. Why not? I, I think I'd do like a tuna pasta bake to start oh. with salt, salted crisp sprinkled on top to add some crunch. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, a main. Oh, what do I want? I want fucking chicken and waffles. Why not? Never had it before. Why? Oh. Now's the time. Why not? Oh, My Brave. Brave for a final meal choice, but, you know, I'm a brave man. And for dessert? Oh, just loads of mango sorbet, actually. Loads light. of mango sorbet. <laughs> I'd have nice. a light dessert after that. And then, that, like, yeah, so <laughs> that's just kind of... <laughs> yeah, a little a refresher before I go to the chair. Yeah. What drink? Me. Oh, what Rio. Drink? Why not? Let's go back to the classics. <laughs> Oh, Rio, yeah, do- Dr. Pepper Zero. Dr. Pepper Zero. Dr. Pepper Zero. Zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got watching yeah. your figure you as you die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've filled up on, on pasta My teeth are all fuzzy. <laughs> you can't have that. Hey, look, literally, I can't, I can't do full fat drinks. It does make me feel... Actually, yeah, I'm about to die, so what does it matter? You're going to die. Screw it. Give me, give me full fat Dr. Pep. <laughs> Let's go. Good for you, man. <laughs> Thank you. What are you thinking, Peter? Um, Man, I would maybe have... Um, Oh, it's difficult to pin down because there are a few things that if they're on the menu when you're in a restaurant, I'm like, yes, I will order that. I order it every time. I really like mussels. Ooh. Yeah, I really like those. Sometimes they're a starter. Sometimes they're a main. Uh, I also I probably I'd go with the, the thing that I order most often as a starter, which is um, like chicken pate, chicken liver pate with a bit of like red onion marmalade or chutney. Oh, that on the, and give me plenty of toast or bread don't you know you, you always run out of slices of toast when you order pate <laughs> um so yeah enough bread and then would i i would either have like just a, a basic bitch pepperoni pizza but like a really good one or steak and chips which is also fairly basic oh, but no, you know what that's, that's, that's just who i am Oh, bit of popcorn um, sauce. Whoa. Yeah, Whoa. yeah, that's it. Oh, and then, you have it. <laughs> and then I would end with an even more basic option, but I don't get to have it very often. I'd have some vanilla ice cream with, like, red mm. sauce on it. It's, like, it's red strawberry <laughs> sauce. Yes. Monkey's blood. Yeah. Let it, monkey's let, yeah, monkey's blood. Let it melt a little bit and then stir it all in so it becomes, like, a pink oh, paste. Yes. Yes. That's how I eat my ice, ice cream. I'll tell you what, I've got a great recommendation for you. Yeah. If you put it in... Uh, a, a, a drink cup and then go into yeah. the bathroom mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. run it under the hand dryer you can <laughs> melt it really easily and then it, it's even smoother even you're softer. speaking like a man of, of experience there Ben as though you might I've have done certainly before. never done such a thing in my life are you, are you sure? no okay I have I did it I did, oh, you did. Ben. I did it not as an adult although no. I would uh. if I could get away with it I definitely would 
but I'm a bit more socially conscious now than I was when I was <laughs> 10. <so>. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, if you've got the ice cream factory available to you, right, and you've had enough ice cream, everyone knows that milkshake and ice cream are different things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When it's when it's harder, it's ice cream. When it's soft and drinkable, it's, it's, if you want to get your money's worth, you load that bad boy up, you take that right into the bathroom, and you melt yeah. that sucker. <laughs> under the hand dryer as people come in and out and they see you doing it and you think nothing of it because it, this is normal <laughs> to drink normal okay. behavior i would have a as many pictures as i would want at, in the moment of um sex on the beach oh yeah lovely How about hmm. you ben what would you have I mean, my courses are are, are not going to be then they're, they're not going to make sense as in i'm not building up in terms of you know size of of offering i'm going to start i'm going to go truly sentimental all the way through i think yeah so i'm going to start with pesto pasta and bacon which is something that my dad used to make for us when he cooked tea and that was really good loved that and then i think for the first first main what's the second course called or is the the third course is dessert isn't it yeah so main for my main i would have my grandma's shepherd's pie, oh, which I've not had for a very long time because it's delicious. And no matter how many shepherd's pies I've had since or in all my life, none have tasted as rich or as delicious as grandma's shepherd's pie. That's the best mm-hmm. one. So I have some of that uh, for my uh, dessert. Back to grandma, apple crumble. You're going to oh. have grandma for dessert. Yeah, grandma. <laughs> Chocolate grandma for dessert. Um, no, her apple, apple crumble. crumble. Really good. Oh, yeah. Lovely yeah. stuff. I, like I think Americans call it cobbler, if that helps. Oh, is that what cobbler is? I think. Oh. I might be wrong, but I'm I'm led to believe that it's for any Americans listening. Cob- apple cobbler, possibly. Right. I don't mm. fucking know. Drink-wise, uh, I don't know. Probably want to get really drunk, but with that much food, I don't think alcohol is going to really make any kind of dent. So, Or just make sure you drink a lot of it. Yeah, I could just, I could just go for triple absolute vanilla vodka and pepsi max that's what i'll go for oh that sounds bloody lovely that that sounds like a newcastle night out drink <laughs> mm. it's also a newcastle night in drink or any other occasion you could possibly think of it's great mm-hmm. so there we are those are our options none of us went for the butterfield diet plan unfortunately but uh, no maybe next time and finally bit of a thinker this question comes from Meg Haynes, 24. You find out a comet will destroy Earth tomorrow. I should say also someone else asked, what would you, what would you do on your f- final day on Earth? What are you doing with your last day on Earth? Oh, God. Um, you have 24 hours to do literally everything. Remember that I, the roads are going to be completely yeah. useless, probably. Yeah, yeah. Over- it's everyone's last day. There is a meteor. It's not just your last day. Mm-hmm. This is what you do in between bouts of fighting off hordes of people or scrambling for survival at this point. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. Definitely think- have to, uh, you know, fit in some time for, for sexy times, I think. Mm. Absolutely. Um, you know, maybe maybe towards the end of the day. Maybe as the meteor. <laughs> <I don't- pass. laughs> this is the moment the really you're going to yeah. keep the mood sustained there. That sounds. Oh, here it comes again, hotter. Oh, well, if they uh, if they had like a timer on the news, because you know scientists are very clever at this point, they would probably know the moment at which we're going to die. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and all I would need to do is start one and a half minutes before <laughs> that, and then I would die at climax. <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> would you attempt to seek shelter or would you just <laughs> embrace the abyss? Well, if it's a meteor that's going to destroy Earth. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, as in like much shelter. take it apart. Yeah. yeah. True. Uh, just go out to the nearest forest and have a wander for a couple of hours. Look at some mushrooms on the floor and some mm-hmm. beetles. And then, yeah, just wait for it to come. That's, that's, that's all he can do. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um... I would probably, um, if assuming all phone lines are working and internet is working, I would I would reach out to family yeah. and friends and I'd talk to all of them first and get that sort of out of the way. And then uh, my my partner's parents don't live too far from here. So if we could make it to there, 
then that would probably be a good idea. And then just like all get shit faced. Yeah. And just try and enjoy yourself as much as possible all the way up until it, cook everything in the freezer <laughs> and just <laughs> and just have like a big party surrounded by as many people that you could, you know, feasibly get to mm. who who matter to you. That would probably yeah. be it. If the roads were somewhat passable, then I think I would do the same because my family's only about two hours south. So I mm. think we'd probably all head down there, get together and yeah, eat and yeah. drink and be as merry as possible. Even if the that. roads are, are fucked, you know, you'd still, you'd still probably, I don't think it's a, like a zombie apocalypse, like everyone's abandoning their car kind of thing. I think it would just be, you'd move really slowly. Yeah. That'll yeah. be it. So just that's that's the hangover like you know that's avoiding the worst hangover of your life and i think that'd be quite yeah. a, a crowning moment of like i feel messy as hell i ain't gonna feel a thing tomorrow damn it i'm Woo. full of sausage rolls and all the sausage rolls vanilla vodka. yeah Woo. what shrek yeah, three meal oh yes yeah shrek three. good oh i that don't eat vegan of, uh... food as i die oh, <laughs> <laughs> there is a member of my family who uh when they were i think maybe six they had to do a thing at school which was uh they were they were asked what would what three things would you take from your house if you had to like leave in a hurry i mean i think they'd done some sort of history maybe they'd like read about the exodus in the bible or something like that and then it was like you know they were linking it to what they were learning about and it was like, what would you take with you if you had to leave right now and he put um my like my teddy um my uh my Nintendo DS and my Shrek 2 DVD. <laughs> <laughs> Priorities are correct. Uh, yeah. yeah. Shrek 2 <laughs> on DVD. Excellent. Well, there we are. That is, uh, those are all the questions. Well, they aren't all the questions, but those are some of the questions that were submitted. Thank you, everyone who submitted questions uh, on our Instagram at vidiots.official. We're on uh, TikTok as well with that handle. And uh, we post all sorts of stuff there, including things like that. So make sure that you go and follow us there and keep an eye out potentially for more requests for future things. Um, it's become a bit of a staple now on Instagram for uh, the, the day of or just before a new episode goes live. A cryptic teaser for one of our things is posted and you all have to vote in a poll as to whose you think it is. You did mm -hmm. manage to get uh, Peter's right last yeah. week. You did not manage to get mine right the week before. You thought Mikey brought the poo museum along, which is understandable. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> so there we are. And thus concludes all of the things from this week. Uh, thank you, everybody who submitted things. And thank you, you guys, for your things as well. Mm, thank you for yours. You. You're very welcome. Mikey, I believe there's some kind of shop. Yo, Don Tootin, if you head over to vidiotsofficial.com and click on that lovely enticing little shop button, you will be greeted with a veritable bounty of clothing, goods, and other. Um, we got we got t-shirts, we got mugs, we got hoodies, we got sticker, we got probably some other stuff on there as well. Go check it out, vidiotsofficial.com. Shop. Sure. 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 Uh, <laughs> once again, Instagram and uh, TikTok, we are at vidiots.official, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash vidiots official. No dot in there. Our Discord is vidiotsofficial.com forward slash Discord. Thank you, Tommy and Fleckers, for modding us over there. We appreciate you. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash vidiotsofficial as well. Sometimes we stream on there. Nothing planned currently. Podiots.com is where you can go. If you want to donate three pounds or more, you'll get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the next podcast. You'll join Pod Squad. You'll support the things you enjoy and will really bloody appreciate it. I tell you that much. Mikey, can you kick us off? Mr. Blobby Experience Glasgow. Donak 07. The generous Tommy the Wank Engine. Freddy Webber. Somehow Jesus returned. And Stephen Scordes. Also, Alexa, do you work for the CIA? Alexa, you're lying to me. Lord Rotovich, Frogly, Caroline, DFS, have a sale on. Caroline, can we get a parrot? And finally, we have Mr. Macca, well-known democratic judo. Caroline, I fucking did. Only on Podiots. Can you say, show me your thing? There we are. That's your podcast. I just realised what the dem democratic judo one is. It's the Australian arrested Australian man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Democracy. Oh. Yeah. Manifest. So you know your judo well. <laughs> Podiots.com. Three pounds or more to get a shout out. 
uh, at the beginning and the end of the, of the next show and join Pod Squad. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Pod Squad, for this episode, this this week, this this show, etc. Peter, what came out on Vidiots six years ago this week? I'll tell you. Skyrim Zoo Chapter Three: Funeral for a Friend. Uh, memory cards for March the nineteenth. Trolling each other in Playlinks Frantics. Podiots Episode Two: Doing a Dharma. <laughs> Uh, post some tap number five, Billy Ray Dolrus, Skyrim Zoo Chapter Four, Horsing Around, Worst Games Ever, London Racer, Ooh, classic. Whoa. Memory cards for March the 26th, and uh, five irrefutable ways microtransactions will get your parents back together. Mm. Post some tap number six, What Have You Done? I don't, I can't tell from the thumbnail what they had done. <laughs> you have to watch it. Uh, Wallace and Gromit's Impossible Train Game for Piece wow. of Cake. And I think, yes, uh, today at time of release, Prove It, The Sims Part 1 as well was released. Fantastic. Uh, Mikey, where are you on the internet? At Powerboy on Twitter and Instagram. That is the best place to keep up with what I'm up to these days. And if you're feeling generous and want to support a a a charitable (gasps) chores, no, sadly, no carrots involved, a charitable cause, you can head to bit.ly forward slash Mikey Bikey to donate to St. Peter's Hospice in aid of a 65k bike ride I'm doing in under a month's time for charity. How exciting. Uh, Finally. Oh, no, Peter, sorry. Where are we on the Internet? We are at (laughs) that Peter Austin and at confused underscore dude. And together we're at Team Triple Jump on Twitter, but also uh, on YouTube and Twitch where we are playing video games and talking about video games and hanging out with Rules Boss um, Mm. on Patreon. Yes, we are. And finally, why not leave us a five-star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms, and we'd really appreciate it. Not everyone's in a position to give money, and that's totally understandable. We appreciate your support by virtue of just listening, but if you could go and leave us a review as well, that would help loads, uh, I think. So, I mean, Al Gore's rhythms, you know how you know how it is, something like that. Yeah. Do we have a final question before we disappear for a fortnight? Um... Uh, what would you do uh, on your last day on Earth? What would you eat and what would you do? Yes. Great question. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much for listening slash watching, everybody. We'll see you very soon. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.